Conservative Republicans are still defiant, already gearing up for that January budget fight. And joining us to discuss this is Sean Spicer. He is the communications director for the Republican National Committee, and he joins us from Washington, D.C. this morning. Mr. Spicer, good morning. Good morning, Dale. Thanks for having me. Sixteen days of government shutdown have come and gone, with Republicans not getting any of the concessions they asked for. So many are asking, was it worth it? Well, I think we cast a, um, a spotlight on the major problems facing this country, debt and some of the drivers of them being Obamacare, uh, the major one in terms of what's driving a lot of the debt and the increase of this. So from a, from a standpoint of did we bring the attention to these issues, yes. Does it give us an opportunity, as the president said, he wanted to get past this so that he could negotiate? I think it's pretty clear now that we have... Uh, create, set that table and said, Mr. President, now we've, we've agreed to these terms. You now have to the table, as you said you would, to negotiate over this. We've piled up $17 trillion of debt, and it's time that this nation dealt with it. But the polls are indicating that Republicans, the shutdown, it did not bear well for the Republican Party. In fact, some say, almost 75% of the people say, they don't like your party. What do you say about the polls? Well, Dell, I mean, let's be honest. They, they say the same thing about the president, the Democrats. I don't think that what happened here uh, looked good from the outside. I think a lot of Americans looked and said, what's going on in Washington? But at the end of the day, I think you can take the short-term hit. And what's happened too often in Washington for decades, frankly, is that people have passed the buck and done the right and, and, and done things that would uh, be appealing to constituents back home, mainly through increasing spending. And look what we've ended up. I think at, at a time, the Republican Party and our members, especially in the House, stood up and said, enough's enough. We have major problems. We need to be honest with the American people about what those problems are. And it may not be politically popular at the time, but I think that the long run, it'll pay off. And I think you're correct. The polls do not, they're not kind to anybody anywhere. But the bottom line is, regardless of which way you look at them, those polls, if you were an auto mechanic, nobody would bring their car in to be fixed either by the Republicans, <laughs> the Democrats, or the White House. So what do you do come the midterms and what do you do come 2016? Well, just to play on your example for a second, Dell, when you bring in your car and your mechanic says, all of these things are wrong, it's going to cost you a lot of money, you're not happy with the guy. But at the end of the day, uh, there's no one that's happy when they go in and they look at their mechanic and, and the mechanic tells them all the problems. But when you have a good mechanic that's honest with you and tells you, look, I know you don't want to hear this, but we have serious problems with your car. If you don't fix the engine, it's going to go out from under you. We've got to start dealing with it. Here is a maintenance schedule that will allow you to keep the car, get it back in shape, avoid you from calamity where you'll break down on the highway someday. You may not like to hear it, but when you, and you may be mad at the time, but you probably come back a few days later and say, you know what, I appreciate you being honest with me. I know that you have my best interest at heart. And so I think what we need to do is to continue to have this conversation with the American people and say, okay, I know you didn't think this was pretty, but we have serious problems. We have solutions to tackle them. We want to tell you about how to do that, and we're the party that's going to be honest with you about what we need to do to sustain the, you know, to, to but keep this country we, on the right track. But are you being a bit disingenuous by now tying this to the debt when all told for months it was about Obamacare? And, and I couch it this way by saying the president now admits that there are problems with the Affordable Care Act that, that you call Obamacare, saying that there are glitches in the system and things need to be fixed. So moving forward, what are you going to tackle? Are you going to tackle the glitches or do you still want to dismantle, dismantle Obamacare? Well, let's remember, Dell, that, that I know this got messy at the end, but it's because there were two separate issues. The debt ceiling came due just after the fiscal year the government ended. Obamacare was tied to the shutdown. Uh, the entitlement reform and everything else was tied to, to the debt. What happened is you had those two issues collide, and it got, and that's what I, I think, frankly, made this a lot messier is that people stopped figuring, trying to figure out what was, you know, what, what was each problem and where did they come together. But so there, they, Coincidentally, they do tie together. Obamacare is a major driver of the debt. So I think going forward now, because as you recall, there were two issues. One, people kept talking about what it would take to get the government back open. And two, what it would take to raise the debt ceiling. As they came together, one big deal allowed both of them to be avoided uh, or to be dealt with at the same time. Now what we need to do is go in and, and sit down and have those negotiations. But make no mistake, Obamacare is both a major problem for Americans, uh, uh, American taxpayers, for businesses, uh, but it is also a major driver of the debt. Mr. Spicer, and it'll some, have to be dealt with in that some respect say as well. that Ted Cruz is 
party or major problem for the Republican Party, and he was the one that was driving this debate, as were the Tea Party Republicans. What do you do about Ted Cruz and the Tea Party? We embrace him. I mean, this is a. The, the, you embrace we wouldn't him, be but where we are. Uh, the speaker couldn't get him to, to come on board any vote. But, but. Del, see, the problem for too often is I think people assume that the, the, the job of the party or of Washington is control folks. What, what Ted Cruz and a lot of these members do is, frankly, respond to what the American people in their districts and their states want them to be talking about. So this, this idea, I think, in the media of controlling them is exactly the opposite of what the American people are looking for. For too often, I think that they've seen people in Washington walk lockstep and say, let's make deals, let's increase the debt ceiling. I think what Ted Cruz and a lot of our members in the House are doing is responding to what the constituents and the people from all outside the beltway are actually talking about, which is what's going on in this country, who's actually dealing with the problems that this nation is facing, and what are the solutions that are going to go forward. So I, had, I think it's complete opposite of having control over people. It's bringing more people into this discussion and actually starting to listen to the American people. But let's, when we talk about what the American people want, only 18 percent of the American public as a whole voted for Tea Party members. Is that really what the Republican Party wants to be the face of their party? I, I, I frankly, I, I don't even know where, how you could possibly come up with a, a statistic like that. I the mean, it's, Tea Party it's members impossible. come who from a, the who, Tea Party who, members I, I, come not from sure gerrymandered a... districts. We all know that. And of those districts, when you add them up across the country, they represent 18 percent of the people out there. They don't represent the majority of Americans. Is that the face that the Republican Party wants to be known as? I, I mean, I, I categorically reject the idea that there is there is no one in Congress today that has a label that says Tea Party Republican. They either have an R or a D saying which ones are the labor Democrats, which ones are the move on dot org. So which ones are the Occupy, which ones are the Occupy D.C. or the Occupy uh, Wall Street were Democrats? I mean, that's that's literally like saying that. But no one ever asked the Democratic Party, which ones are your Occupy Wall Street Democrats? Because they're frankly more Democrats tied to the extreme left wing, the environments, the environmentalists, the labor, the labor or the Occupy movement um, than than there are, you know, so-called Tea Party Republicans. We are each one of these Republicans, to some extent or another, uh, has folks in their district, and and this idea that the Tea Party is driving it. The Tea Party is made up of concerned Americans throughout this country that are have had uh, had too long of Washington telling them that that there's no problem with what's going on, that we can just keep the train moving in the same direction, and that nothing's ever going to be. Uh, ha ha there's not going to be any consequences. So okay, frankly, okay. the Tea Party is is a bunch of Americans who are tired of what's going on. In this nation. Okay, well, other patriots like Senator John McCain, who once was the standard bearer for the Republican Party, say that Obamacare was doomed from the start. Moving forward, how do you marry all of the different ideologies inside your party? Well, I, I think the, the one thing that is forgotten. Is, is that everyone in the Republican conference, in this particular case and in others, was united. There wasn't one Republican that was opposed to defunding and replacing Obamacare. Not one. The question came down to how do we do it? And you had a group of senators and some House Republicans that thought that they had a strategy that would work. Uh, others believed that they would have to be done in, in a piecemeal approach. Some thought wholesale replace. But at the, at the, that is a, a fundamental disagreement about tactics. At the end of the day, we all believe in ending up at the same place. This is the most unified conference that we've ever had in, in history. And I think that too often what, what gets confused as a difference over tactics is, is mistaken for a, a disunity within, within the goal. Which is the case. Mr. Spicer, thanks for being with us this morning. I've known all of your predecessors and had the same debate with them. Will you be back? I'd love to, Dell, and uh, I'm glad to, glad to come back whenever you'd like to. Thank you very much. That is Sean Spicer. He is the communications director from the RNC, joining us live from Washington, D.C. this morning.